Welcome to Authors Revealed. I'm Becky Anderson. I am so excited. We have Newberry winning and Caldecott honor and Coretta Scott honor winning author and illustrator of the book, The Last Stop on Market Street. It's Matt De La Pena and Christian Robinson. Welcome to Anderson's in Naperville. It's so great to have you guys here. Thanks for having us. Great and I know here. this is a really belated congratulations, but for, for the Newberry, for the Caldecott Honor, for the Coretta Scott King, congratulations. Yeah, this book, we I can't tell you how many hands we've put this in. It's irresistible, I'll tell you. And we just you. We just love doing that. Thank you. Yeah, so I want to know, since the ALA annual show's coming up, are you guys a little nervous? Or Also, too, I want to know, how did you feel when you got those calls that morning? <laughs> well, I'll tell During you, the, yeah. I think there was a little buzz for the Caldecott. So I left my phone on the night before, thinking that our agent, we have the same agent, might call me and tell me if he got a call. And then the phone rang for me, and I remember thinking, this isn't Steve Malk. <laughs> and... The guy said the word Newberry, and I was like, this guy screwed up. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> so, and then, you know, it sort of sunk in. And then an hour later, Steve called me and told me about his two honors. So it was pretty shocking and amazing morning for me. Yeah, yeah no, and like you're saying, it was just disorienting. One call after the other that you just, right. I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot good, to take in. Good things are happening. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. the book looks, I mean, it's, you know, it's hard not to cover up some of the illustration yeah. with the three medals on there, but it is just incredible. But I just want to, it's just so cool that you guys did this. And we were, we were surprised with the Newberry. Absolutely. But when we, we looked at it, we go, it could not be better. I mean, but for me, the illustrations and the text and the words yes. are, are so one in this yeah. that it's not just the Newberry, but I'm so glad that it got the other medals because it's so well deserved. And that was important, you know, like yeah. to have both sides sort of recognized. Yeah. I think that was like. Super well, we exciting. were, you know, thinking back about all the other books over the years that have won the Newberry, there's only been one other picture book. Yeah. And that was like, I don't know, over 30 years ago or something. Yeah, you know, with, and yeah. I learned about all that stuff on the back end, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. So I want to know, where, where did the seeds start to grow for okay. our last stop on Market Street, Matt? And when did you guys start to collaborate? Because so many times, and Christian, I'm sure it's true for you when you illustrate, there, have there been incidences where you have illustrated a picture book and you have never met the author? All the time. Mm -hmm. All the yeah. time, see? I, so I want to know the collaboration that you guys, because I think it's probably more than what usually happens sometimes. It was a little different. I'll just start okay. out by saying that, you know, I was directed by our agent to Christian's blog. And I was oh. kind of looking at his stuff. Yeah. This is before he even had one book. Uh, my agent was about to sign him. And so there was one illustration that I just loved. And I could imagine it in my daughter's room or something. Uh -huh. And it was of a little boy on the bus with his grandmother. And I told Steve Malk, our agent, I love this illustration. And he started to plant the seed of like, I wonder if there's a book there. Right. That's how right. it started for me. Yeah. So when did, when, did, when did he get you two together? I mean, was that right after that? And then did you collaborate from the beginning on the story? And did it start? Because I read that both of you used to ride the bus with your grandmother. Yeah. And, and did you collaborate? I mean, what came first? You know, it's like the chicken or the egg kind mm -hmm. of thing. Did you, did you know about that we were going to work together? Or was this all Steve's grand plan? <laughs> um, I, I can't, actually, I honestly can't remember, but I yeah. think I really didn't know that it was really happening until mm. you had really written something and put something together. Or actually, no, we, we, we spoke over the phone a few we times. Did. We talked a couple times. So it slowly evolved into something. I didn't know what it was going to be. Right. Um, but... Yeah. And that was actually um, very rare, as you probably know, that we spoke. We talked a couple right, times about right. the text and what the story was going to be. And so it was kind of nice that we got to, you know, collaborate just at least a little. Right, you know? right, Because right. ultimately, of course, he, he's going to do what he does with the, with the words. Yeah. So, so did your illustrations change some of your words? And did you guys go back and forth a little bit? You know, because I, I, you know, when you hear those collaborations that do take place, sometimes that yeah. happens because something, you know, something sort of. I will tell you this. Um, I remember getting a note through our agent that I think he wanted another animal in there. I don't know if you even remember this, <laughs> but the funniest thing is, I remember thinking, oh, an animal. I wonder where it could go. Oh. And okay. it became. Yeah. Like one of my favorite illustrations with the dog closing his eyes. Like it's, yeah. I love that yeah. illustration. And I think that wouldn't have happened unless I actually got a note from him. Right. So right. that's kind of 
that's one thing that I remember of how changing the text based on, you know, yeah. his ideas. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I always love yeah illustrating animals or other sorts of characters that make the story more whimsical. Sure. And, you, sure. and you and you went with that and like the the hawks flying. And, yeah. 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 Well, I love your no, Gaston. I love that book. That yeah, that's that's so great. So this bus trip, it's happening. Is there any city that you had in mind when you guys were thinking, where, whether it was San Diego or whether it was, you know, uh, you know, Brooklyn or where you guys live now? Or where, where, what city did you guys have in mind when so you did the work? So that's a great question. Okay. So I lived in L.A. for four years with no car, which is, according to a Snapple fact, there are three times more cars than people in L.A. Yeah. And I trust them. Yeah, sure. So sure. I think uh, for me, I thought of L.A. And then it goes over to him. And what were you thinking? So I see the book as sort of, usually when I'm working on any book, I'm building all this like inspiration and reference to look at things and to help me, keep me inspired. Um, but for this book, it was very just sort of going into my own sort of like reserve of experiences. And it's pretty much a mix of where I grew up, which is LA, and where right. I live today, San Francisco. Oh, you're San Francisco, you're Brooklyn, that's yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so a little bit of that. And then how much of your grandmas or you, either one of you, are CJ in this book, whether visually or in the words? Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I would say my grandmother is a very, or she was, a very quiet woman. And she, her wisdom was wordless. Mm. So when something happened to me, like if I got in trouble or something, she would be very gentle. She'd come over and pat my leg. And that was almost her way. Yeah. Something really good happened, she'd come and just pat my knee. So she was quiet. And this was a different grandmother. Right. And so I actually got to use the grandmother to sort of impart some ideas that I wanted to explore, which is mostly about teaching a young boy to see himself as beautiful. Right, right. And Christian, how about you? How about your grandma? My and grandmother's not quiet at all. <laughs> <laughs> She's very vocal. Um, and she's just a huge personality, but very loving and very warm. Sure, sure. And uh, so it sounds like it's a mix of both of our yeah. Right, right. Yeah. right. She's also very dignified. I met his grandmother before, um, I think, finishing the text. Um, yeah. 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 So I actually met her, and that was a huge advantage. You know, I yeah. got to meet her. And I think physically, um, you know, or visually, she very much looks like your grandmother. Yeah. Yeah, I, the illustrations, I just thought, and she is, she's very dignified in the totally. book. And I love the way she's guiding CJ through the city to look at things differently. And you put so much detail in the illustrations to look at, and I know kids absolutely love that. Um, but what I loved about the trip is that it's showing, and, and you know, we're all talking about more diversity within books, but you know what? We just need books that are taking place now that show people in our communities, in our neighborhoods. And yeah. I love that aspect. This bus trip shows so many people that you see every day. Yeah. And I know that a lot of the kids, when you when you read it to them, they love the guy with the tattoos and the it's so true. and the blind man with the dog and yeah. and those things. But it's 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 so great this generational story between grandmother and grandson. Yeah, that's so great. So you guys, I could so see why this got the Newberry now. Oh. You know, in hindsight, because you wouldn't think of it in that way. But yeah. um, so what do you what do you guys hear about? Because I know I think you have both have opinions about what's happening with the whole movement about more having more diverse books out there for kids. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm on the board of the We Need Diverse Books right. group, okay. and I think my biggest thing is if you're going to have an African-American protagonist, it doesn't have to be about the Underground Railroad. And, and those books are incredibly exactly. important and valid. Exactly. They need to exist. Yeah. But I love contemporary books featuring diverse characters, okay. stories that aren't focused on diversity. I think yeah. that's very important. And that's what we're tuning into as booksellers, especially when we're talking to kids, we're talking to educators. Yeah. Those are definitely what we tune into. Christian, how do you feel when you, because you've illustrated so many different things, you yeah. know, yeah. From, from Josephine Baker to Gaston the dog to, and the smallest girl in the smallest grade. I love that book and all of the other ones you've done. So how do you feel about the whole movement that's out there? Um, I'm grateful that the conversation's happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been happening for a long time, right. but I'm grateful that I feel like it seems like more so than ever that people are really taking to action and are passionate. And I also feel there's an importance in, of course, making sure that we see ourselves in stories and can connect with characters and realize that we matter and that we're seen, but also that we tell stories that 
excite us and that are fun and sort mm -hmm. of like you said aren't necessarily just about like the first person who played the piano or mm -hmm. you know right but that's yeah. a good point yeah. you yeah. know who like maybe went to a wizard school you know or like something you know right you know the other thing I loved in the language in this book is that you used everyday language mm. you know the normal language instead of trying to alter it but it was so natural, it was so real. Yeah. Yeah. So did, did you did you write it any other way, or, or Matt, did you did you just set out to write the way this grandmother and grandson would be talking? When to I each other? when I sit down with especially dialogue, I just try to write what I hear, as opposed to what I want to spread to kids. So I'm in a weird way, I'm almost plagiarizing the world. I'm just listening to the music of everyday speech. In my YA novels, I've been doing that since you know I started. Yeah. 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 And in this yeah. one. I did have to sit down and say, okay, is, is CJ in his most comfortable uh, spot with his grandmother on the bus? Is he going to speak your language or is he going to speak his language? Right. And I just chose his. I will say, though, I get a lot of emails where people are frustrated and saying, why did you do this? And huh. my big thing is, you know, look, if CJ, if this book was set at a school, He'd probably switch codes and he would <laughs> clean up his language, but he's in the most comfortable place right. with his grandmother. Yeah. I just want to be authentic. Yeah, and it was it was totally that, and I like that you know it, in the illustrations and too, and also in the text of the picture book is that you're not whitewashing anything. You're seeing the city and you're traveling by bus, yeah. but also too at the end. And, and I love CJ's that typical kid where everything you know the the glass is always half empty. There's something wrong with this, or why are we doing this, mm -hmm. and everything. But then at the end. I love the fact that she gets, she, she turns things around for him to have him see things differently. But yeah. also you adding, you know, the, the soup kitchen at the end was a great way for kids. So I think kids reading this picture or having the picture book read to them will see the importance of getting involved in another way too. And I think it's fun to yeah. not only have this book, you know, read to diverse children, but also just to children living in the suburbs in wealthy yeah. neighborhoods. I think it's sure. just important as important for them to check it out. Yeah, yeah. So. You are the first Latino to win the, the Newbery Medal. Yeah, how, how did that, that? feel? <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, first of all, I didn't know until people right, told me. <laughs> sure, sure. But then, you know, I think the biggest thing for me is, you know, we went to a school today. It was about 95% Mexican-American. Mm -hmm, right. And I think it's important to stand up there and say, look, I come from your community. It was just in Southern California. And I chose to have a life in books. Yeah. You can too, yeah. you know? Yeah. I think it's just important to show kids that, hey, this is a possibility. Right. And, and Matt, too, all the, the YA you've written, you've written, and your dialogue always is so incredible. Thank you. But how, what was that switch like from, from writing, writing you know, a full-fledged novel yeah. for a young adult to you know, down? And people think that picture books are easy. No, they are easy. so <laughs> not easy. So how was that, that switch for you? So a lot of people think it's, it's, it's a huge stretch for me. But the truth is, I started out writing spoken word poetry. Ah. So before I ever wrote a novel, I was writing tons of poems that were kind of rhythmic based, rhythm based and musical. Yeah. And so for me, I look at a picture book as just a spoken word poem. So I want to know, Christian, what was, what was the first recollection you have of you wanted to be an artist or, an, or just wanting to draw? Do you remember what that first time was that you sat down and what was that that you drew and that you knew this, this was kind of... This is for me, kind of thing. Do you remember what that might have been? Hmm. I don't know what that one drawing may have been. Yeah. I do know that I was raised by my grandmother, and I was also my grandmother. She was like this strong character and figure, and she took care of me, my brother, my aunt, my two cousins, Jeez. and we all lived in a one-bedroom apartment. Wow. And I, looking back, I realized that drawing for me was a way of creating space for myself. Hmm. We had limited means, limited. Yeah space yeah. but drawing you can sort of just create the world you want to see and create the space that you need yeah. um and so yeah drawings has always been like this source of just that's cool yeah. yeah yeah so so also too i i know that you worked in you work in animation and you some of your book trailers did you create some of the book trailers for some of the picture books that you've done mm -hmm. but you worked at pixar and you also sesame street studios um, but what led you to that, and what do you enjoy the most? And mm. now that you're, you know, you're really full-fledged into children's illustration, but are you still doing a lot of animation? So yeah, um, I, yeah, I studied animation, and um, it, it really was like it is. It's still a, a huge love of mine. Like to animate means to bring to life, mm. and I and I think that those same sort of principles or values that I gained from animation, which is that a drawing is something that is living and breathing, and that you should 
give respect and integrity is something I hopefully carry through to my illustration. Yeah. I really believe in these characters. I really want them to feel alive. And, and sure, yeah. sure, sure. And Matt, what about you? That first, I know you said you started writing poetry yeah. and things like that, but what, what was that first time you go, I think this is what I want to be? I think. Besides a basketball player. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think it actually, they overlapped a little. I think yeah. I was gunning for college and I thought the only way I'm going to get to college and be the first in my family to go there is through basketball. Like I knew that my parents couldn't afford it. Mm -hmm. But once I got to college, I think I, I flipped to literature almost immediately. And what I thought about when I was in college is I was like, I've always been writing these little poems. They're about working class people focused on the community where I was raised. And I think I went back to some of those poems and I was like, you know what? Like I've been a writer this whole time and I just never viewed myself as, uh -huh. as a writer. So I think in college, I started to learn how to see myself differently as not just an athlete, but as somebody who's trying to make art. Right. And what was that switch up? Because, you know, you had a full scholarship to play basketball yeah. in college. Um, University of the Pacific, you yeah, went to. Yeah, correct. What, what was that like, being an athlete, but also being someone who loves words and, and crafting that sort yeah. of art? In well, a different it's way? funny listening to Christian talk about animation and then going to illustration. Yeah. I see a little crossover with basketball and writing. It's the energy, like yeah. the pulse, the rhythm. Like when you think about basketball, you think about dribbling and that kind of rhythmic going up the court um, and the sound of people's feet hitting the, the hardwood. And when I think about writing, like to me, I want to get the story right, but then I also want to get the music right. right. You know, so it's about sounds as well. But the weird thing is when I was in college, my teammates would make fun of me for writing poems. Mm -hmm. But then when I went to graduate school for creative writing, right. they'd make fun of me for being an athlete. So you kind that's of, so, kind yeah. of go, you know, maybe I'm not an insider in either group, but then maybe that's the best place to like well, make right. art. Yeah. Sure, because you're spanning two different worlds. Exactly. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a much cooler place to be. I like it, yeah, yeah. slightly outside. Yeah. So I know your dad yeah. came to reading late, but tell us about the story about him and growing up with him, but also I think you kind of brought him to books and now he's a voracious reader. Yeah, so my yeah. dad was you know, high school dropout and wasn't a big student, of course. He had a family when he was really young. He's a teenager. Um, so he got a job and he worked at San Diego Zoo for several years, uh, 25 years. And then when I was in graduate school, he lost his job, a tragic moment. And I think uh, one time I was at home um, having lunch with my mom and my sister, and I had a book under my arm. And he said, hey, Matt, what book is that? And I told him it was 100 Years of Solitude. Uh -huh. And he goes, hey, do you think I could read that book? And I was like, man, I've never seen this guy read a book. He needs to start with some Dr. Seuss, you know, but you can't tell your dad that. Yeah, right. So I gave him this really difficult text, and it took him like four months, but he read it. And then he said to me, maybe I could read the books you read. And I gave him every book I read in grad school. Wow, what a book to start with. I know. Oh. Magical <laughs> realism. That's incredible to start yeah. with, with that one. Oh, my gosh. And then he ended gosh. up going to college uh, and declaring his major in literature. Wow. So now he's like a wow, third grade that teacher. Is, that is just phenomenal. Yeah, pretty crazy story. evolution. I know. Well, you've huge influence, you know. Well, I think I put the right book in. Like, he saw his his own life right, in, sure. in, in, in and I can yeah that definitely know? has that kind of story to it yeah, yeah his, his background is, is Mexico yeah. and similar yeah so you guys since this book you, you know this book made it onto bookshelves everywhere and to libraries and everything have you done a lot of school events together and what are some of the funny things that kids have said and and what is this experience for you actually and also doing school events with much younger kids yeah. than you know YA readers and that. And Christian, I'm sure you've done school events for your other books, but what has it been like with this book? Is it is it has it been different? Has the experience been? How many have we done? We did one <laughs> <laughs> this morning. It's our first one today. Are you serious? Yeah, first yeah. ever. First time oh, I ever. I thought you guys teacher. had been. Oh, whoa! This is the very start of a tour. Well, we're our first yeah. school uh, events yeah, exactly. for you. Woohoo! <laughs> but I'll jump in. Yeah, and, sure. Because yeah, yeah I, I love doing school visits. I yeah. love. It seeing how kids are responding uh, yeah. to the book. Um, this one has definitely been a lot different. This mm. book, it almost, uh, it asked people to just be really raw and honest and open and to just kind of share. People are really like just open and just sharing everything about yeah. their experiences sure. with property or um, living with, you know, diversity and it's just yeah. really, it's really special to it's, see it. It's really powerful when, um, I, I remember the first time I ever presented this book, it was in uh, 
in Northern California in a place called Half Moon Bay, mm -hmm. but it was a predominantly Mexican school. And I remember those kids, you know, it's an African-American protagonist, but those kids were taking ownership of the story because sure. they ride the bus and they, they, some of them live with their grandmothers and they felt like, oh, this is my book. You know, mm -hmm. I think that's a powerful thing. Yeah. And I think that's what you guys have done with this. It doesn't matter who you are or where you come from or what, everyone relates to this story. That's what I think is the beauty of it. Yeah. 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 It's, it's pretty awesome yeah. to see it get out there. Yeah. You know? So can you tell us or give us a little hint about what you guys might be working on together that might be coming up next? Well, he doesn't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because so you, so you, but you still have the same agent though, right? We have the same agent. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll All just right. start by saying, you know, I have a, a YA coming out next year, but I also finished the text of a, of a picture book uh -huh. um, about a Mexican-American girl living in a migrant community. So that may be our first project together as part of the okay. uh, new stuff. But he doesn't know this, of course, and you know, <laughs> maybe he'll hate the text. Yeah. You're not sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Christian, you've worked with some some really wonderful pe people like Mac Barnett and Kelly DiPuccio and um, Renee Watson on some of your other books. So did you ever work with them closely or is this the first time you really got to work, you know, side by side on a picture yeah, book? Did, what about Mac? Did, yeah, how about Mac? Because well, he's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. Well, Mac is in the Bay Area and <laughs> that's right. when that's I, right. actually, we all share the same agent. Yeah, that's and, true. And, oh, you too. <laughs> well, this helps. I know, you guys I know. Are, yeah, he's um, doing and, a good job. <laughs> yeah, and he, he really has just been a really great friend. He was one of the first people to ever to reach out to me and just hang out in the mm. community yeah. And, yeah. and he's the first person I go to if I'm like, what do you think of this? And he'll, and yeah, yes. He's so, also one of the best out there right now yeah, doing yes. picture books. Yeah. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, he, he seems, everyone just, wow, yeah. yeah, kids love him, yeah. So what is your favorite medium to work in? I love to work in collage. I love any, okay. anything where I can get my hands dirty, where I can cut sure. things up, paste things down. Um, yeah, I kind of, I love the paper cutout because I just love, I'm sort of a control freak. And I love mm -hmm. how sharp of a line I can get if I cut that paper just right. Um, I love the simplicity that it forces you to kind of work within sure. since the design is so limited. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So come come July for for the for the ALA. Yeah. Um, are you guys nervous about it at all? I'm scared to death. <laughs> <laughs> I've only been to this um, the Newberry banquet once. Right. And I had to watch Katie Camilla give a beautiful that was oh, amazing. Speech. <laughs> so, you yeah. Know, see that that was, yeah that's yeah. that's pretty tough. But well, I've heard you speak before. You're, yeah. Well, you're, but you're she great. just yeah. was just yeah. so. Profound and beautiful, yeah, and, yeah. and I remember I was sitting at the table thinking, "I'm so glad I never have to do this." So, you know, <laughs> yeah. So we'll but the thing is, they make you record your speech. Ahead yes, of time. already so, recorded it. Yeah, it's so already recorded. At least it's so. done. It's, it's done. So. And he has to give a speech, you know, for the yeah, and I think right. we all have to put on our different hat, you know, the, yeah. the speaking hat. Right. Um, I'm most excited to share this experience with my grandmother, yeah. who does yeah. not. Take, who does not fly, so I got her a very nice train ticket <laughs> all the way from L.A. to That's Orlando. Wow. That's amazing. Um, she's going to have her own adventure. Yeah. Yes, but she's excited for it, and I'm, I'm just glad, like, excited to share all this with her. Yeah, yeah. So winning, winning all these, because you guys have won so many accolades for your other books, too, but winning these three, seeing those three medals on the yeah. front of Last Stop on Market Street, is it daunting next, like, when, when you know that your next book is going to be out in the world? Does it, does it put a little pressure on you guys, or is it just sort of maybe, you know, it kind of bolsters you up for, for what you got coming next. I'll just, I'll start by saying, you know, I have to tell you, like, I think failure is paralyzing, can be paralyzing, and I think success can be paralyzing too. I remember right after the award, the first thing I was doing was this picture book that I've been kind of tinkering with <laughs> off and on. And I remember actually saying, is this a Newberry worthy picture book line at one point? And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to stop doing that. Wow. Um, yeah. But yeah. but yeah. I will say that it's just so humbling, and in a weird way, the awards they almost feel like somebody has forgiven you for your mistakes, you mm -hmm. know, because we all make mm -hmm. so many errors as artists. You know, you look back at your my all my books, and I'm like, oh, there's so much I would change, mm -hmm. right. and you almost feel like, oh, these people on the committee they they forgave me for those mistakes right. in a weird way. Yeah, that's deep. <laughs> <laughs> or complex. So, so Christian, is it is it? I mean, does it does it make it harder, or is it just maybe gives you more confidence? 
confidence. I don't know, yeah, where that, where, 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 where to get that. But um, it's it's a, it's a, I don't know. It's sort of with this one. I what am I saying? I didn't see it coming. I almost mm. I didn't know mm -hmm. to that it was on. Yeah. You know, so it's just sort of it's just it's all a treat. It's all exciting. Yeah. And luckily, I had already had some books I had worked on right, right. after this mm. one, so I don't even have to worry about those ones. Like, sure. and so it's just. Um, as long as I get, as long as I keep giving me more books to work on, I'm happy. Right, right. <laughs> you know. Well, this is so cool that you guys both have the, got these these honors. It's yeah. sort of your first time around for the the, the big ones. I know. Right? Yeah. It's so yeah. fun to be yeah. be in Orlando. Right. Yeah. So, are you going to animate Last Stop on Marcus Ooh. Jane? An animated version of Last That's Stop. That's interesting. That would be. <laughs> and actually, I mean, I think it would be. Well, it would be so cool. I mean, you're seeing the movie in the bus and what's happening and. You know, somebody needs to sign this up. <laughs> that actually would be a lot of fun. That would be fun. <laughs> it would be fun. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm in. All right. Thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me. And congratulations again. I know you've heard it a gazillion times, but I know you get to, don't get tired of it. But yeah. Thank you so thanks much. Thanks for coming you. to see you. What an incredible conversation we just had with author Matt De La Pena and illustrator Christian Robinson with their award-winning picture book called Last Stop on Market Street. It's won the Newbery. It's won a Caldecott Honor. It's won a Coretta Scott King Honor. It's a picture book that all kids need to have. Thanks for joining me on Authors Revealed.